couple people trickling in. All right, and let's get some, let's uh, let's get underway here. And so thanks everyone for, for joining us for tonight's program, uh, a film screening of The War Game uh, by Peter Watkins, uh, which is an incredibly important film uh, from 1966, uh, actually an Academy Award winning uh, film for best documentary uh, that year. Um, this film uh, envisions an escalating war between NATO and the USSR. Uh, resulting in a nuclear attack on Great Britain uh, and uh, envisions uh, the consequences and the impact uh, of nuclear war. Uh, it was originally written for the BBC, uh, but the film was deemed too provocative uh, by the British Broadcasting Company. Uh, and you'll see why uh, once, we, once we start showing the film. Um, uh, a quote from... Uh, perhaps the best well-known film critic uh, of our time, uh, Roger Ebert, uh, really said it all um, uh, for me. Uh, in, in giving the highest praise and a perfect score to the war game, he said of the war game, they should string up bed sheets between the trees and show the war game in every public park. It should be shown on television, perhaps right after one of those half-witted war series in which none of the stars ever gets killed. It should be shown to the leaders of the world's nuclear powers, uh, the men who have their fingers on the doomsday button. Uh, so I like to think that that's what we're doing tonight. Uh, we're not stringing up bed sheets on the trees uh, to show it in a public park, uh, but uh, using the technology of our time uh, we're getting the word out about this incredibly important documentary, uh, and I, I am incredibly pleased to see such uh, a large audience with us uh, tonight. Um, after the film, uh, and, and after we take some, some of your questions, uh, uh, we're going to hear a presentation uh, from Dr. Ira Helfand. Um, if you could put Dr. Uh, Helfand up on the screen. Um, thank you. Um, so uh, after our question and answer uh, session, we are going to uh, show a video of uh, a video message from the filmmaker himself, uh, who uh, wrote a little bit about um, our, the film, his process, uh, how he made it, uh, how, how the BBC, who he wrote it for, uh, was so resistant uh, to, to getting this information out, uh, particularly because it's such a powerful uh, and moving film. Um, so uh, Peter Watkins was good enough uh, to put something together for us. Uh, and we're also gonna have uh, lots of great actions uh, that you can take uh, as well. Uh, we have an upcoming conference uh, that is going to be this Saturday uh, from uh, 1 to 5 p.m. That's uh, Eastern time uh, with many great experts um, uh, and, uh, and some politicians as well. Uh, Representative Ted Liu uh, is going to be joining us uh, uh, as, as well as a message uh, uh, from uh, Senator Ed Markey. Um, uh, this is a conference uh, to promote uh, the policy of no first use uh, of nuclear weapons. Uh, uh, Massachusetts Peace Action, uh, first founded as uh, part of, as SANE in, in 1957, as a group uh, that was committed to abolishing uh, nuclear weapons. Uh, we see uh, the threat as uh, perhaps the greatest threat to humanity, uh, an existential threat uh, that could not only kill uh, billions uh, of our brothers and sisters across the world in a very short period of time, uh, but, but a threat that would also knock our civilization back, uh, perhaps requiring hundreds of years or even a thousand years uh, to rebuild uh, our civilization. Um, so we're so glad to see a, a, a 
big audience here with us tonight who cares about this issue and, and wants to take action. Um, so we're gonna provide you with some ways to do that. Uh, and right now I'm going to uh, turn it over uh, to Dr. Ira Helfand, uh, who's gonna say a few words uh, in introduction. Uh, Can we record this? Can we record this? We will be sending out a recording uh, uh, to, to answer your question um, uh, after the fact uh, uh, to everyone who registered will receive uh, not only a recording of the program, but a link uh, to where you can watch this video, where it's streaming, um, as well as actions you can take and ways to join the No First Use Conference uh, on Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern. Dr. Helfand. So I have very little to add to that really excellent introduction that Brian just provided us. Uh, I guess just two points I would make. One is the trigger alert. Um, this is a very difficult film to watch. I assume all of you who've signed up for it are aware of this, but just to be aware, um, the imagery and uh, the narrative, it, it's very difficult. Um, and just secondly, to, to say that I think it's really understandable why the British government wanted to suppress this film, because when you look at the medical consequences of nuclear war, which this film shows in, in graphic detail, the nuclear policies of all the nuclear armed states become absolutely untenable. It is totally clear when you see this depiction of what nuclear weapons do, that the only reasonable nuclear policy is to get rid of these weapons as soon as we possibly can. So let's look at this film and then we'll gather afterwards to, to talk a little bit about uh, some aspects of the medical consequences which are not covered in the film and then to take any questions or comments that people have. Thank you, Dr. Helfand. So without further ado, uh, we, we proudly present to you uh, The War Game by Peter Watkins. present nuclear development policy threatens so it must never come to pass we, we cannot allow it that that's my reaction dr helfand yeah, i think we probably all need a minute or so to just sort of recover from this um The problem that we face today is that none of us really believes that this can happen. And it can, but it doesn't have to. And I think that's the value of this movie. It helps us to understand how much is at stake if we don't get rid of these weapons. You know, this movie was made in 1965 the, at the end, they talk about the fact that there is no attention in the media to this issue, that there's no information being given out. That did change a bit in the years following the production of this movie. Uh, by the late 70s and early 80s, there were a lot of movies, there were a lot of books, there was a lot of public discussion about nuclear war. And we, those of us who were alive at that time, understood that this could happen. And it motivated us to take action to make sure that it didn't. The problem that we deal with today is that people have lost that understanding. You know, in, in the 1980s, if you ask people what are the great problems facing the world today, preventing nuclear war was number one or number two on everybody's list. If you pose that question to people today, preventing nuclear war doesn't occur on most people's lists. People just are not thinking about it. And even those of us who are involved, and I suspect many of the people watching this movie are involved in, in, in efforts to try to prevent nuclear war. Even those of us who, who are engaged in this work, who know that nuclear war can take place, in an important way, don't believe it. And there's this disconnect 
We just can't accept this could really happen. And somehow or other, we have to create in ourselves and in the whole population, the understanding that this can happen and that it is therefore incredibly urgent for us all to take action to keep it from happening. This movie, you know, I, I'm not going to belabor the point in, in terms of talking about other effects of nuclear war, except to say very briefly and in a very general way, this movie was made before we understood about the climate effects of nuclear war. Uh, it focused on the direct consequences, which are unbelievably horrible. We now understand that in addition to these direct consequences, uh, any significant use of nuclear weapons would cause global climate disruption. Uh, a war between US and Russia would cause a full nuclear winter. A more limited nuclear war between, say, India and Pakistan would not produce nuclear winter, but it would cause enough climate disruption to trigger a global famine so that even areas that were not directly affected by the war itself would see profound food shortages and the breakdown in society that this movie uh, just you know, demonstrated to us. Um, this is the information that we have. The scientists and the, the, the climate scientists and the, and the medical people have documented this at great length. The press, our, our leaders are not talking about this. And so the vast majority of people don't know about this. Young people have never been taught this. Uh, people of my age who lived through the, the worst parts of the Cold War used to know this, but for the most part, we've either forgotten it or, or, or just you know, pushed it out of mind because it is so terribly unpleasant to think about. And somehow or other, we have to recreate the broad understanding in society of the enormity and the imminence of the threat we face so that people will take action. Because we have seen in the last few years that action is possible. Around the world, countries came together in 2017 and adopted the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, a treaty which makes the not just the use of nuclear weapons, but the simple possession of nuclear weapons a crime in international law. And this was an extraordinary step forward that treaty entered into force formally in January of this year uh, after it was ratified by the 50th country. It's now up to 54, 55 countries that have ratified. But the countries that have the nuclear weapons were not part of that process. They boycotted it. They haven't signed the treaty. They haven't ratified the treaty. And far from working to get rid of the nuclear weapons, as we all know, they are all engaged in enormously expensive programs to upgrade their current nuclear arsenals, to make the weapons even more deadly more usable. And so the task before us now is to universalize that treaty on the prohibition of nuclear weapons, to get the countries which actually own the weapons to take the steps they need to take to prevent nuclear war. Brian spoke earlier of a conference that will be held this Saturday, which I invite you all to join. Um, it is focused on efforts to build a campaign in this country for, to have the United States adopt a no first use policy, a pledge that it will never use nuclear weapons first, and a campaign to prevent nuclear war. Um, there is also in the United States right now a campaign called Back from the Brink, uh, which my organization, Physicians for Social Responsibility, is very active in. This is a campaign which seeks to get the United States to enter now into negotiations with all eight of the other nuclear armed states for the kind of comprehensive, verifiable, enforceable, time-bound agreement that we need to eliminate these weapons. It also calls on the US to take a number of unilateral steps as those negotiations proceed to give momentum to the negotiations and also to make the world less dangerous as the negotiations proceed. No first use is one of them, taking our weapons off hair trigger alert so they can't be launched in, in, by accident or by as a result of a cyber attack is the second part of this program ending the sole authority of the United States president to launch nuclear war without any check on that authority. Uh, and finally, we call, we call on the United States to abandon plans to spend $1.7 trillion over the next 30 years, enhancing every aspect of our nuclear arsenal. This campaign and the other efforts that people are engaged in can succeed. In 1981, none of us imagined that just four years later, the head of the Soviet Union and the president of the United States would sit down 
and say, nuclear war can never be won, it must never be fought, and effectively end the Cold War arms race. It was a breakthrough that was beyond our wildest dreams. We have to dream big now too, because we don't have a lot of time. But if we all take action, we can bring about the same kind of fundamental change in nuclear policy that ended the Cold War arms race, except this time we can finish the job and get rid of the weapons altogether. So I think right now, we welcome questions people might have, comments people might have about how we move this work forward. Thanks, Ira. Um, and, and people can ask questions in, in the chat, uh, as well as uh, use the, the reaction uh, button to raise a hand. Uh, but first, I, I want to turn the, the floor over to uh, Sophia Woolman, uh, who I think has some, some helpful uh, comments uh, for us. Sophia, if you would. Thank you, Brian, for the very dignified um, little intro. I've just been spamming him in the chat, so I'm laughing that he made it sound kind of serious. So, um, yeah, I definitely felt like, uh, first, just to say, I appreciate so much, Dr. Helfen, you're bringing us in with like, I think we probably all need a moment because I'm still reeling um, off of seeing that video and the sounds and, um, So I want to also offer that moment again. Um, my, my little introduction and background is I'm involved with Mass Peace Actions, um, TPNW little working group of the Nuclear Disarmament Working Group. Um, and so we're working on the ban treaty. Um, but I think for me, this film and your comments, Dr. Helfand, about like where this takes us kind of spiritually and psychologically <laughs> to see this or where it takes me um, and the need for that to be coming to people's consciousness, even those of us, some of us who do work on this issue a lot, it's like, this is still so shocking and horrifying, you know, to return to this types of, it's not just information, um, it's like, it's consciousness. So one question I have for you um, if, is if you can share um, like any resources or thoughts, I know you're a doctor on the kind of psychology of that, um, I'm a minister and so I can offer some of like, and I'm interested in practices and sharing practices, um, for allowing us and helping us to be in this space where we can kind of maybe more connect in our consciousness, um, with the types of things we're seeing here to be able to, you know, fight that much harder and help raise the consciousness about all of this. One other comment that I had that I hope, um, you know, the relevance of even the nuances like with the military and the, the police, the role of the police um, in this film, I just feel given the challenge to abolish police in the same, I say that in the same breath as abolishing nuclear weapons. Um, and I'm only speaking for myself here. We don't have a policy on that within the, we haven't talked about that as a TPNW working group. Um, but the language of abolition, I think, being you know so important to to the to the struggle for elimination. So um, those are my comments. I don't know. Um, the other question that I have is Dr. Helpin, and I'm always curious. Um, you know, the relationship of us as U.S. Americans, whose government has not signed the TPNW, and how to lift that up um, in our in our again, consciousness, collective consciousness as like the moral wrong that it is. Thank you for the time um, and for uh, putting on this program. Um, to try to answer your, your question, Sophia, you know, I think there are three things that, that people need to understand. One is that nuclear war is gonna be worse than we could possibly imagine. Second, that nuclear war is gonna happen if we don't change course. And third, that we can change course. Um, it's a pretty simple message that we need to bring to people. Uh, in terms of how we get the United States to make this change, I mean, there are people who, who think that we need to have a total fundamental change in, in US society and culture before this can happen. Uh, 
I think that would be desirable, but I don't think that we have time for that, to be quite frank. Uh, I think we need to move very quickly to get the nuclear issue under control. Um, we've been told for a long time by all the, the nuclear powers that they hope to get rid of nuclear weapons someday, but that the time isn't ripe. That this is something we'll do in the future when the world is safer. And the problem is the world isn't getting safer. And this is largely being driven by, by climate change, which is making the world a more and more difficult place to live in. And therefore a place where there is more and more potential for conflict as people fight over what's left in Michael Clare's admirable phrase. Um, it, the further we get into the climate change period, the harder it's gonna be uh, to avoid conflict. And if nuclear weapons are on the table, the greater the chance these weapons are gonna be used. So we need to move very quickly, I think, to isolate this part of the problem and to deal with it. And that to me is something that even bad leaders of countries ought to be able to be helped to understand. Uh, in the height of the Cold War, first uh, Kennedy and Khrushchev, and then later Gorbachev and Reagan, despite all the, the, the tension and the hostility between their countries, were able to figure out that nothing was worth having a nuclear war over, and that they needed to act from that truth. And I think that that's something that we can get our leaders to understand. Um, and and it, it's a question of building a, a mass movement, letting lots of people uh, understand this, taking this information directly to the leaders themselves, uh, trying to get the media and the popular culture to help people to spread this awareness of, of the imminence of, of, this, of this problem. Um, as I mentioned before, the, the Back from the Brink campaign is, is, is trying to do this by approaching uh, local communities, local organizations, um, and getting them to endorse the, the five point platform that I mentioned before. I put in the, uh, in the chat, the website for that campaign, which is easy to remember, it's preventnuclearwar.org. And I would, www.preventnuclearwar.org. And I would encourage all of you to, uh, who are in the United States uh, to visit that website and, and figure out how you can become part of this, of this campaign. Um, this is the way we're gonna do it if we're gonna be successful. We're gonna build up local pressure. We're gonna uh, get our local leaders to take action with us and we're gonna get finally to, the, uh, to the, the national leadership and get them to understand what they need to do. We're gonna to need to mobilize the, the, the medical community, the scientific community, the faith community, the labor community, the social justice and, and racial justice communities, all of them to understand the urgency of doing this. Thanks, Dr. Helfand. Uh, I see Desmond Khan has his hand up next. Uh, so I'll put you on the screen and ask you to unmute yourself. Uh, your question or comment, sir. Thank you very much, Brian. And, and thank you uh, for this, this uh, film, which was not fun to watch. Um, I just think uh, sort of echoing something Dr. Helfand said was that people have forgotten what we had learned in the 80s primarily about nuclear winter. I think most people today don't even know what that means. Uh, it was sort of widely understood back then. <laughs> and now I think people say in my son's generation, they, they've never heard the term. And I think we need to bring that back to people's consciousness, you know, and, um, it's a very powerful thing when you understand it, that there's no escape, you know, any kind of nuclear war. There's no escape for basically the people on this planet. So I think we need to bring that back somehow. And the other thing I just want to mention, you know, I'm a, I'm a biologist. I deal with probabilities. So we've got two probabilities. Either there will never be a nuclear war or there will be one. Now that there could be one that could happen by some kind of accident. Uh, I understand that in Russia, they almost fired missiles because they believed through some accident that they were under almost under attack. <clears throat> so what is the chance that uh, there would be an accidental nuclear war? Well, it's very low. However, as time goes on, the probability 
of a very low probability incident occurring accumulates to the point where it becomes more and more likely that at some point that low probability accident can occur. Can I say something? Um, Jasmine, I, I agree. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you'd finished. I'm done. Thank you. I'd like to say something. Wait, you're not. You're not looking up, sir. Okay. I was just going to say I agree with everything you said, Jasmine, except for one thing. I, I don't think this is a low probability event. Uh, that's become the, the the received wisdom that this is a low probability event. It's not just that incident when the Russians almost launched their missiles. The United States has almost launched its missiles on several occasions. We, we know of at least six occasions when either Moscow or Washington actually began the process of launching their nuclear forces in the mistaken belief they were under attack by the other side. Um, and I don't think six near misses in the last um, 40, 30 years, I don't think we can call that a low probability event. Uh, and um, Okay, yeah, I, I, I wasn't aware of that. This is, yeah. Frankly, it's a high probability. Yep. You've got to get back. Yeah. I'm on your phone. Yeah, we're going to uh, actually move on to the next uh, question, but uh, just to just to advertise the conference on on 1230 at 1230 on Saturday. Uh, again, uh, one of our speakers is going to be uh, Elaine Scarry uh, of Harvard, uh, who has documented a lot of those nuclear near misses. Um, so that's another reason uh, to attend our, our conference. Uh, let's see. Uh, next up, we have uh, Peter Metz. Uh, Peter, your question or comment. Oh, <clears throat> Brian, this, this is a galvanizing moment, and we need to take advantage of it. We've got two, over 200 people here who are now properly horrified, and we can all do something tonight. Joe Biden in 2017 declared in an important speech on nuclear weapons before he left office as vice president that if we want a world without nuclear weapons, the United States must take the initiative to lead us there. What I would like to ask everybody here to do tonight is to go to the White House website and send a simple, it's all set up to send the message to the president to send him a simple message telling him how horrified you are at the prospects that there might be accidental or on purpose nuclear war and ask him to get going on the negotiations that Ira Helfen talked about amongst the nine nuclear states. The United States must take the initiative and lead us there. Do it tonight. Thanks, Peter. And I'm about to put in the ch in the chat uh, a, a link uh, that allows you to do just that very easily. Send a message to your members of Congress and to members of the administration, and we are going to encourage you to do that right now. Uh, and and we're going to leave this channel open um, uh, while we while we uh, watch the message from from the filmmaker Peter Watkins and encourage everyone to take action. Uh, uh, during that, that period. Uh, you can do it and it does make a difference. Uh, uh, politicians react when they're pushed by their constituents uh, to do something. And that's what we hope that you'll all do uh, tonight. Uh, but yeah, let's take a couple more questions. I see uh, Miguel Romero. Byron, let me just say that if Joe Biden gets over 200 messages tonight on this issue, he can't avoid seeing it. I think that's it, right, Peter. His staff will point it out to him. They're going to ask, what in the world happened up there in Massachusetts last night? Please do it. Thanks, Peter. Miguel? First, uh, thank you for sharing this, this uh, amazing video. I mean, it's ab absolutely horrifying, but I mean, I think sometimes you need something like that to be able to get a, you know, uh, an important point like that, you know, that's uh, like a reaction, you know, a visceral reaction from people. Uh, I was going to say, I think, I think one of the things is, that is important is for people to be primarily always anti-war, because as you see, somebody posted on the chat about, for example, the Israel-Palestine conflict, and you have people that were there from when they're young, 
they're being taught, oh, these people, let's kill the other side. And from when they're kids. So like, right, you know, they're getting indoctrinated into that, into that. And then there's not, there's not going to be any kind of easy solution when you're looking at something like that, where people are like talking about killing each other instead of living in peace. So I think primarily, I think, you know, holding the United States uh, responsible, the war machine that supplies uh, Yemen and all these other, all these other places with weapons, uh, you know, and that, and that starts with your, uh, your elected leaders. So, you know, I, I think, you know, asking them questions and uh, voting for people that are obviously, you know, anti-war, I think that's, you know, one of the main things that we can do. But I mean, personally, I think that like the um, denuclearification of, of the world, it, it would be good for it to happen. But I think it's, in my opinion, it's, I think it's not really an easy thing to happen because you have examples, for example, like Georgia who had um, nuclear weapons and then they, you know, they, they were convinced into, or they gave up with, with their, um, nuclear weapons and then uh, Russia started to invade them. So I think like, uh, I think it's important to, um, you know, also like, you know, just talk about like the, you know, that aspect of war, because I mean, some people say that um, mutually assured destruction is the reason why there haven't been any major conflicts in in, uh, in recent history. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm might be wrong or not. I'm just bringing it up for discussion for if somebody wants to talk about that, about that aspect of, uh, uh, of, of the defense of attack. But, um, yeah, but th once again, thank you for you know the video and thank you for the, your uh, comments and and uh, yeah, thank you. Thanks, Miguel. Uh, and there there are uh, lots of different ways uh, to get involved in the peace and anti-war movement. Um, just here at Massachusetts Peace Action, we have uh, committees that are working on the Middle East, on Latin America, uh, on Palestine on the connections between peace and climate change uh, uh, that, that Ira was talking about, uh, on racial justice uh, and decolonization, uh, on, on peace on the Korean Peninsula. These are all uh, uh, peace issues. Uh, and at the very, at the very top uh, is the underlying threat um, that wars can escalate, uh, wars between the great powers uh, could break out uh, and result in a nuclear war that that would destroy our civilization and billions of our brothers and sisters uh, around the war world. So the importance of of being anti-war generally on all of these issues, uh, I, I really take that to heart. Ira, did you have any reaction? No, I I, I, I totally agree with with what Miguel was saying, and I just let me stop talking so others can speak. Okay, great. Let's take a couple more questions and then we'll see the, the video from, from Peter Watkins uh, and, and give you some time to take these actions. Um, so uh, next up, I see Jerry Ross. Uh, Jerry, let me put you up on screen. Sure. So uh, first of all, thank you, Ira and <clears throat> Louise Coleman and Brian and others who put this event together. It's extremely sobering. Uh, Ira, I was struck by your comment that <clears throat> once upon a time, people were worried about this. Uh, back uh, when we were younger, and certainly during the 80s, there was this um, widespread awareness and concern about nuclear weapons. And today we seem to live in a media blackout. Uh, there were other uh, incredibly powerful media events. Uh, we probably all remember the morning after and uh, what, that, uh, what that movie did in America. Um, and I share everyone's frustration in our attempt to influence political leaders and political system in, in getting this done. So my question is, is, is there a way that we can engage other thought leaders in our society? I mean, the media is largely silent very Hollywood uh, in producing uh, powerful films like this in the morning after. Where are our, mor our moral leaders? Where, the, where are our re religious leaders? Uh, we know that, that they've moved, that even the Pope has, has said that uh, nuclear weapons are uh, a sin against God or whatever the particular phrase is. But we don't hear powerful um, or a unified message from the scientific community, from the religious community, from uh, other thought leaders. So I guess that's my question. 
can we uh, think of strategies to engage more voices uh, and in particular the silent media? Uh, Jerry, I think that is the great question before us. H how do we do that? Um, one of the things I like to point out is that, you know, the 1980s was a period of intense uh, attention to this issue. But just before that, in the late 70s, no one was paying attention then either. And we built that awareness um, largely through grassroots activity around the country. Um, it was, I think the media was perhaps more receptive to covering it. Politicians were more receptive too because of the particularly acute dynamics of the US-Soviet confrontation uh, in the Cold War. But I think we're gonna have to do what we did then. We're gonna have to just keep plugging away with this. Obviously anything that people can come up with in terms of um, new ideas on how to get the message out. Um, people my age are not notoriously inept at social media, which is being used increasingly. Uh, the one thing I would say is that, that I think things are already changing. Uh, four years ago, five years ago, if we had shown this film tonight, we would have had 50 people watching it. And tonight we had almost 300. And I think that we are starting to see uh, a real ferment in, uh, in this country and around the world uh, around the, the nuclear danger. Whether that will bear fruit quickly enough is the question. But, you know, after you see this movie in particular, it, it's this is a big downer. Everyone, I think, is really kind of a bit overwhelmed tonight. On the other hand, I've been trying to follow a little bit in the chat, and there's just all kinds of stuff that people are, are doing um, that they're reporting in the chat. Uh, uh, various initiatives to try to achieve what you, the, the task that you, you identified, Jerry, of getting people to understand, of getting this mass understanding about the nuclear danger. Um, Hollywood could be a big help here. They haven't been. They weren't in the 70s either. Then they became helpful in the 80s. Anybody's got contacts, you got to call them. If you know somebody in Hollywood, get on their back and stay on it until they make a movie. Each one of us has to do whatever we can. And, and I think, you know, there, there is hope. I think we have a real shot at, at, at getting out of this predicament, but only if we all really, really commit to it. Thanks, Jerry, and, and thanks, Ira, uh, as well. Uh, I know that there are still people who have their, their hands raised, uh, but we really want to devote the rest of the time uh, to showing the message uh, that, that Peter Watkins, the filmmaker of the war game, uh, was kind enough uh, to share with us. Uh, so I'm going to put that up on the screen right now. Uh, but while we watch that message, which is a video montage and text uh, from the filmmaker Peter Watkins, uh, I would like people to put in the chat um, what you're doing, what initiatives uh, you can share with us uh, as well. And I'm also going to put, be uh, putting up those links uh, to send messages to the administration uh, and to our members of Congress because I really do believe in what Peter said. Uh, if he gets uh, a, a glut of messages uh, all at once, they will be asking themselves, uh, why, did so many, why did so many people send the message to the White House uh, last night uh, supporting a policy of no first use and saying that we need to, uh, to get rid of nuclear weapons before they get rid of us? Um, so uh, right now I'm just going to put up the message from Peter Watkins, uh, but please uh, set, add your ideas to the chat. Uh, and I just wanna let everyone know that we're gonna take all of these links and also a link to where you can see the war game in your own time uh, and send them to you in a follow-up email uh, because uh, we, want, uh, we want your friends and family who could not be here uh, tonight to hear that message as well. Uh, so just give me one moment and uh, we will see a message uh, from the filmmaker, Peter Watkins. And Brian, while you're doing that, I just want to take this opportunity to thank Louise Coleman, whose idea it was to show this movie tonight and, uh, and who worked so hard uh, to, to bring this uh, screening to, to all of us. Thanks, Louise. Right you are, Ira. Uh, this would not have happened uh, without the organizing of Louise Coleman. Um, so uh, my eternal thanks to her. She's Thank a great, you. great organizer. Um, and, and we couldn't have done it without you, Louise. Thank you. Thank you very much. I couldn't do it without you. 
and Ira. Just one minute, we're just dealing with a little technical issue here. Get it up to us in one moment. But please do um, uh, share, share your ideas, what you're doing in the chat. Um, uh, there's lots of great initiatives out there to fight uh, uh, the scourge of that is nuclear weapons. Um, and we want to hear about them. Um, we don't have all of the ideas here. I'm, I'm sure we, there's so many of us here tonight uh, that we want to hear what you're doing uh, in your community. And let me just take the time uh, to thank our fellow co-sponsor, uh, New Jersey Peace Action, uh, for, for spreading the word. Uh, and I understand, uh, Ira, that you also uh, shared information uh, with some of the organizations that you work with too. Would you like to mention them? Uh, yeah, thanks. Um, uh, the Physicians for Social Responsibility in our global federation, the International Feder Physicians for the Prevention of Nuclear War, and also sent this out on the ICANN list as well, International Campaign to Abolish Nuclear Weapons. Okay, great. I have solved our technical issue. Uh, and now let's try that again. Uh, uh, thank everyone uh, who came tonight, uh, and especially uh, uh, give thanks to to Peter Watkins, um, who does not give interviews anymore, um, uh, either uh, audio, uh, video, or or written, but made an exception um, uh, for us uh, because he. He thought it was important to, to send us that message and, and really those, those closing remarks um, that you just read, uh, I think, uh, really say it all. Uh, and I just wanted to say thank you uh, to Peter Watkins for allowing us to screen his important film uh, and also uh, sharing that message uh, with us. And I'm really looking forward to uh, examining the chat after this uh, and just seeing what all you're up to uh, in your at activism and advocacy. And I'm sure there's some fantastic uh, ideas uh, in the chat and I'm going to review them and share all of the, the links um, uh, and information that you shared with us uh, in a follow-up email. Um, so you'll have them all in, in one place. Um, and yeah, I, Alfred, I think that's a good idea. A transcript of, of Peter Watkins closing uh, remarks, I think is a good idea. So I'll start work on that as well. Um, uh, Ira, do you have any closing remarks uh, for us? Any closing thoughts? Just one quick thing. This has been a very heavy experience for all of us watching this movie tonight, even those of us who are very familiar with this information it's kind of easy to get discouraged uh, when you see this. I think the thing we need to remember is this, we all want to do good with our lives and we have the opportunity to save the world. And there is nothing better than anyone can ever do with their life than that. And I think that's the spirit in which we need to take up this challenge. Um, we have the chance to save the world, let's do it. What a great way to end it, Ira. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for attending. Uh, and a special thanks uh, to Louise Coleman, Coleman, who came up with the idea of doing this screening. And I never thought that we were going to get almost 300 people to, to, to join us uh, tonight and well over 500 people uh, registering to this event. So I want to say congratulations to Louise on a triumph, an absolute triumph. Um, and, and just remind everyone again, uh, please uh, take action. Um, let your elected officials know, uh, your members of Congress, the president and his administration, uh, that you care about these issues uh, and you expect them to do something about it. 
um, and tell your friends uh, uh, get get nuclear weapons and the and the true threat that they pose to our species as a whole uh, back into the conversation um, uh, because uh, it is still uh, perhaps the greatest existential threat uh, nuclear weapons and climate change both uh, together to our civilization um, and Ira is absolutely right uh, we can save the world um, but to do so we need to take action um, so I hope to see many of you at our no first use conference uh, which begins at 12 30 p.m on Saturday that's eastern time uh, I'll send out a link to register uh, as well as uh, all of the great suggestions that you provided in the chat. I want to thank everyone uh, for your activism uh, and your advocacy. And, and Ira, uh, thank you for, for your insights and for joining us tonight and, and presenting and for all of your fantastic questions to the audience again. Um, uh, thank you so much. Uh, and we'll see you all soon. Have a wonderful night and peace to all of you. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew. If you'd like, like to show the last epidemic, I have a copy of it, 16 millimeter. Uh, That's great. You know what? And I will put that in, I'll, I'll put it in the chat. Um, uh, my email is uh, uh, brian at masspeaceaction.org. Because I think this is these film showings is something that we should do more of. Um, and, and please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, because we can help you get involved. Um, and that's what it's going to take. Uh, if, if we truly want to save the world from the scourge of nuclear weapons and war in general uh, and hatred, um, it's going to take uh, people like you uh, getting involved. Um, and so thank you very much for, for coming tonight. And I hope to see you all soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.